Looking for a metroidvania where you are rewarded for dying? Then Centered may be a game for you. The tagline for the game is death is only the beginning. Dabbling with an understanding of HP Lovecraft and Chiroscuro art style, beautifully hand-drawn areas and randomly changing rooms brings a new experience to the genre. However, does it stand up against time? Welcome in everyone to the Steel Grizzlies channel and today we are going to look at Sundered in a video game review. The developers of the game Jotun, a hand-drawn action exploration game set in Norse mythology, brings you another game called Sundered. This game was released July 2017 for PC and PS4 and has since been updated and added to the Switch's ever-expanding list of roguelike dungeon-crawling platformers. You can definitely tell that Thunder Lotus Games has taken the time to develop each character model in the game. They look lovingly crafted, causing detailed designs, but more terrifying as you delve deeper into the lore of the game. You play as Esh, a woman trapped in an ever-changing world where death eludes her while hordes of enemies chase her. Throughout the game, you are guided by a metaphysical voice tempting you to either give up the extra powers with a resist playthrough, where you can choose to deny the evil and try to fight while lacking that extra oomph or power, or you can embrace the darkness and succumb to the corruption which is being offered by the shining trapezohedron with a disembodied voice. After a quick tutorial explaining the basics of the game, you are dropped right into the midst of the game. There is no hand-holding along the way, and the game, like previous games to this style, only drops hints of the story as you progress through the levels. While exploring, you go from moments of sheer boredom, exploring empty rooms with no enemies, collecting shards from crates, and trying to jump your way to the next goal, to moments of overwhelming hordes of enemies alerted to your presence by a gong, alarm, or howling noise, the game does provide the opening of a better equipment and tools only after finding them. In your quest to find these new devices, you often get overrun with the floodgate being opened and enemies coming from every direction. And I do mean every direction. You can leave an area where there are no enemies where you previously were to hear the dreaded gong sound and all of a sudden start getting attacked from that exact area in which you left. How do you combat hordes of enemies, you ask? Well, there is a way. As you defeat enemies, you gain shards, which is the currency of the game. Once you die or return to your sanctuary, you will see that you can upgrade parts of your abilities. There are larger circles which provide new skills or higher power-ups, but on the way to those you get smaller skill-ups, such as 5% increase or 10% increase on health, or a little increase on the damage that you make. Also, you can add perks, which the game provides you three options to add these. Some of the perks let you hit harder, but you have less defense, while other perks can let you get more shard from an enemy with no negative effects. Another feature that this game provides, which lets you choose what you prefer. Essentially, would you sacrifice an ability to get more damage but lose extra health? It really is up to you, and I think this is one of the features that is a great addition to the game and one of its saving graces. When we pull back from the screenshot-worthy moments of the giant hand-drawn backgrounds and chaotic fights, there are some negatives about this game. My first qualm with this game is that lack of enemy one moment to being overwhelmed with over 30 to 40 enemies all at once. And yes, it does provide a challenge. However, without skill up, some of these fights tend to be, well, like I have said before, overwhelming. So what would any typical person do when faced with such difficulties? Well, you would grind to upgrade your skills so you can get that meager increase in damage getting ever closer to a new finishing move. This is not to be said that the game is bad, but that it can be, in a word, repetitive. The game does attempt, like the traditional metroidvanias, a formula of a type of platforming skill which really only implies you cannot reach particular areas without specific skills or equipment that the game gives you later on, like a grappling hook or a dash, which with procedurally generated areas looking the same as the previous room location you just went into, you tend to get lost and very often pull the map up wondering just where you are more often than not find you need to go back to track to another location just to find an area you were looking for. 
One thing I really loved about this game were the boss fights. After hours of grinding the smaller enemies, it was refreshing and beautifully set out design. Pulling the screen back just so you can see the enormous boss and have an oh man, what did I just get myself into moment. The fights are pretty simple, in that you have to smash the shards until you break and repeat on the other shards till you beat the boss. The process sounds easy, but as you can see here, it isn't. What's so bad about the boss fights? Well, that would be that there's so few boss fights, it leaves you wanting more. They did add additional bosses on the most recent DLC, but I felt like it just wasn't enough. Now, you're here for a verdict from what I felt on this game. I greatly enjoyed the game. It was about 15 to 16 hours of a playthrough, so not a very long game. There are huge issues with the gameplay, not many bosses, overwhelming enemies, and a repetitive level design. However, there are a lot of pluses that give this game over a 5 out of 10 rating for me. That is the beautiful hand-drawn level design. Once you get to the higher skill ups, enemy hordes tend to be more fun and a oh yeah, bring them at me kind of mentality. The bosses are a fun challenge, and they even offer you a harder option after you beat the game. Overall, this game was a ton of fun for me the more I progressed into it. My score I would give is a 7 out of 10. It's a great game for me. I think one playthrough is enough, and it doesn't hugely stand out as another outstanding Metroidvania, but if you want to check it out, I definitely recommend checking it out when it's maybe on a sale or included in a game bundle. Thank you once again for tuning in to my review of Sundered. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure to like it. Also click the subscribe button, mark that bell icon to get notified of future content. As always, if you want me to play other games, review other games, or just like the video, please leave a comment below. This is Distilled Grizzly signing off.